Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the Samsung Gear Fit. This is part of a three-pronged approach from Samsung to really nail down the smartwatch race. So we have the Gear 2 and the Gear 2 Neo, which are kind of the classic smartwatch form factor. They succeed the Galaxy Gear product from last year. Notice there is no Galaxy here. That's because these are not running Android, so they're just called Gear products. Now the Gear Fit is possibly the most interesting version of these watches, mostly because the Gear Fit is kind of a combination of a smart watch and a fitness band with a very interesting form factor and design. It's $199. It's available in a variety of colors, but the bands are replaceable. So the version I have here, as you can see indicated along the side, is black. Now in terms of our specs, we have a 1.84 inch curved Super AMOLED display with a resolution of 432 by 128. That's good for 244 pixels per inch. Also integrated is Bluetooth 4.0 LE. We have a gyroscope, an accelerometer, a heart rate sensor. And just like the Galaxy S5, this is IP67 certified, meaning you can submerge this in water up to three meters for up to 30 minutes and it's dust resistant. Now in terms of battery life, this has a 210 milliamp hour battery, which is good for about three to four days of normal use. Now, as I said, the Gear Fit is not running Android. In fact, it's not even running Tizen like the Gear 2 and the Gear 2 Neo. It's running RTOS or real-time operating system. So this is a dedicated operating system that is independent of every other Samsung product right now. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this thing. We're gonna have to cut some plastic here. Just lift the lid. And inside you'll find the gear wrapped in plastic. Now we're gonna set this aside for just a minute and take a look at the contents. So we have our Samsung branded USB wall adapter. As you can see, it's a fixed wall adapter with a micro USB charging port. Inside we'll also find our literature, health and warranty and safety guide, Samsung gear quick reference manual. We take a look at that, just some information on how to charge it, how to install it into the band, that sort of thing. And we also have our charging cradle. So we have a little adapter here for the power connectors on the gear fit itself. So all I have to do is plug in your USB port here or your USB cable here and charge it via these prongs. And I'll show you how to do that in a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and peel off the plastic here. Now it looks like on the inside we have our heart rate sensor also covered in plastic, so let's go ahead and peel that off too. Now it also looks like we have a piece of plastic covering our clasp, so let's go ahead and peel that off. All right, so let's take a close look around. First thing I wanna do is boot this up so we have a nice active screen here to take a look at. So Samsung Galaxy Gear Fit, we have our Samsung boot screen animation, the same one that's on the Galaxy S5. And you can see that's asking us to install the Gear Fit Manager on our device. Now this is compatible with currently up to 20 Samsung Galaxy devices. So that includes the Galaxy S5, the Note 3, their tablets, including the Note 10.1 2014 edition and the Tab Pros. So lots of devices uh, specific Specifically, Samsung Galaxy devices are compatible with this. Now, the first thing I want to do is install the Gear Fit Manager, which is available from the app drawer on the Galaxy S5 if you go to Galaxy Essentials. These are apps that are available for Samsung Galaxy devices, but have not come pre-installed. So here we have the Samsung Gear Fit Manager. We can go ahead and download that. Now, once you launch the Gear Fit Manager, it will automatically detect it, so we can go ahead and select that. So as you can see, confirm pass key to pair with the Galaxy S5. We're going to click OK. Now the first order of business here is to update the firmware on the Fit, which it will do automatically. All right, the software has been updated and the first thing we need to do is agree to our terms and conditions and click finish. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the design of the Gear Fit, starting with the display, which is part of the big story here. This is a Super AMOLED display, which is curved in two directions. You can see it's curved in the profile to your wrist, but it's also curved in this direction. So you can see it's got a slight curve here. I'm not sure if the display is curved, but it sure looks like it is, but at least the glass is curved edge to edge. So it looks really nice. It actually feels really nice to navigate on this display as well, because it has that nice curve to it. Now in terms of the watch band, we have this gear fit branding along the side with this nice soft textured material. You can see on the exterior, again, this is available in a wide variety of colors and you can take this off, which I'll show you in just a moment. We have our Samsung metal clasp here. So if you pop this, you can see we have two rivets which line up with our holes and there's lots of range here from really tiny to really spacious and I seem to be somewhere in the middle. 
And uh, along the side, along the module itself, you find your sleep, wake, or power on button. This also acts as the home button, which I'll explore. Now you see we got this little notch here on this side as well as on the other side, and that's basically for the power charger, the power adapter that snaps on the back of this. Now we also have our heart rate monitor. As you can see, we have a sensor as well as an LED light, which glows green when it's active, and that will monitor your heart rate uh, when you use the heart rate app. Now again, this pops off, so all you have to do is pop this off, and you can swap out the color. The module itself is always the same color, uh, so all you have to do is swap out the band. And I'm sure third-party accessories will be available, but of course Samsung also sells them. Now to put the watch band back on, it's pretty basic. All you have to do is snap it into place, like so, and you're good to go. Now here's the power adapter with the micro USB port along the side. You just snap it into place, like so. As you can see, it grips along the side, and to pop it off, all I have to do is use that little tab there to get it off. Now, what you're missing on this device that you get on the other gear products is a speaker and microphone. There's just a vibration motor in here for notifications. All right, so let's go and take a look at the basic user interface, and as you can see, I tap the power slash home button along the top to wake it up. Now, if you swipe to the left or right, you get to one of your pages of apps, and again, if you press that home button, it'll take you right to the home screen, which is this clock slash date. You can also change this and I'll show you exactly how to do that under settings. But first, let's take a look at the basics. So when you tap and hold the power button, it takes you to a variety of options, including powering off or restarting. You can hit this back button to take you back to the home screen. Now, as you can see, we've got several home screens here, which include notifications, media controller, settings, find my device, you also have timer, stopwatch, and sleep, as well as pedometer, exercise, and the heart rate monitor. Now, if you look down here, you can see as I move between the pages, you get these little indicators, just like on a Samsung TouchWiz device. You'll see that actually right there. Now, when you're on the home screen and double tap with two fingers, you get access to your brightness control. You can also see your battery life. Now, if you go to maximum, you get something called outdoor mode, which is limited to about five minutes. And that will brighten the screen and actually change the user interface to be more usable outside. Now, first off, let's take a look at some of the fitness apps they've included here. As you can see, they get their own page. So we have pedometer, exercise, and heart rate. Now, pedometer is pretty basic. So you can see that I've been running the pedometer today. So I've walked 769 steps, 0.39 miles, and 41 calories burned. And I can also swipe here to get to history, my goal. I can set my goal or reset my steps. So if I go to my history, you can see my previous days. I can see I've only been using the pedometer for about two days. I can swipe to see the date as well as the steps of walk, which is today. And and then the previous day. Now if I go back, you can see I get a little back indicator here. I can set my goal, which is 1,000 or 10,000 steps, but I can also increase that if I want. Now next up is exercise, and there's a variety of exercise categories, including running, walking, cycling, hiking, and then we can see our exercise history. And again, this syncs with the S Health app, which also has these uh, exercise activities. So for example, if you want to go walking here, again, just tap on it, and uh, when you click Start, it will start running the heart rate monitor. So you do need to have this on the wrist, obviously, for this to work. So what will happen is, is that while you're walking, you will be able to see a live read of your heartbeat, and it will monitor the duration of your exercise. So when you're done, you click Stop, and it will save it to your S Health app. So that works again with all those exercises. Now we also have the heart rate monitor. And all you have to do is wear this again on your wrist, click Start, and it will begin measuring your heart rate. Now if you swipe to the left, you can see your history. So you can see all your previous heart rate readings going all the way back. Now we also have a timer, which you can adjust. So we can go down to one minute here, click check, and we can click play and start the countdown. As you can see, we get a progress indicator. You can also refresh it, so it goes back to the start, click play. And then you can continue doing something else and the timer will still run in the background. So if we wanna jump back to the timer, swipe all the way to the timer, there you go. Now once the time is up, it begins vibrating and you get this little pop-up notification from which you can dismiss. And of course we have a stopwatch so we can begin recording our time. We can lap it and continue lapping it. Pause it, you can see three laps and you can see if you swipe up, you get to all of your lap times. Now we have another app called Sleep, which is kind of interesting. I actually used this last night. So when you go to bed at night, all you have to do is start this app and it begins recording your sleep activity. Basically what it's doing is detecting motion. So you can see for a fairly long night for me, seven hours, five minutes, I was motionless for 93% of the time. And if I had more events, I can also swipe through here to see my history. Uh, now I can also go to, if I go back here, I have blocking mode. So I can enable blocking mode, which will basically turn off the notifications so they stop tickling my wrist all night long. Now we also have this useful feature here called Find My Device. So if you tap on that, as long as your device is connected to your Gear Fit, if you click search, 
It will begin ringing your phone or your tablet very loudly. It also begins flashing that LED torch on the back to help you find it. And you can dismiss it on the phone or you can dismiss it on your watch. Now we also have this remote media controller which will work with whatever media app is currently active. Right now that's Google Play Music, so you can see I have my track information, I can skip, play, pause, or I can adjust the volume here. And if I go back here, I can click play. It starts playing the music on my phone. I can skip to the next track, or I can skip back. And you get the idea here, it works pretty well. Now next up is settings, and there's a few things to look at here. So we have our clock, so if you go to our clock, you can see we can select a variety of clocks. We can select our current clock and location, or another location. You can also select a clock that includes your calendar events, a clock that also includes your pedometer, a clock that also includes the weather, and one of the other clock faces. So if you click this one, it will now change the clock to include my weather information. So if I go to my home screen here, there we go, which is quite nice to have. If we go back to settings, we also have our wallpapers. And again, we have custom wallpapers. So for example, you could create your own wallpaper, which you can do under the app. And I'll explore the gear manager in just a moment. So you can also select the default wallpaper and one of the many wallpapers they have available to you. And even more wallpapers are available if you go to the gear manager. We also have lots of options under display. So we have our brightness, which you can adjust. We can also change the wrist our device is worn on, left or right hand side. So we'll change the direction of the gestures. Now we also have rotate screen, which I find very useful. I don't find this horizontal mode to be useful at all on a wrist. So if I click vertical, it now changes the orientation to this vertical orientation. If I go back to the home screen now, you can see that everything is now vertical. And if you're wearing this on your wrist, this makes a lot more sense and is a lot more visible. Now we also have our screen timeout settings, which are defaulted to 10 seconds, but you can expand it all the way up to five minutes. We also have our font size, which you can change from small to medium. And that only works with text for notifications, not necessarily font sizes across the device. Now we also have the wake up gesture. And basically like the other gear products, if you lift your wrist to look at your watch, it knows you intend to look at the watch, so it wakes up the display. So you can wake it up into the clock or into whatever screen you were last looking at. Of course, we also have our Bluetooth settings, which you can toggle on and off, so if you want to disconnect your device, that's one way to do it. We also have double press settings. Now, the double press is referring to the home button. So if you double press the home button, you can bring up your notification panel, your media control, your pedometer, the exercise app, the heart rate app, uh, sleep, timer, stop, watch, settings, etc. So you have quite a few options here. So again, if you put this device to sleep, just double tap it, takes you to your notification panel. Now, we also have our fitness profile, which you can adjust here. So uh, Mayo, uh, my birthday, my height, my weight, which I do need to reduce, and uh, the preference of kilometers versus miles. Click done and you're good. You also have privacy lock, so you can lock this device with a pin. Basically what will happen is if this device disconnects from your smartphone, it will require a password to be entered in order for you to access the, this device. So I can set my password. So I'm gonna use my favorite password here. So now I'm not prompted to access my pin right now, but if I go ahead and disconnect it, click okay, so with Bluetooth disconnected, I now need to enter in that pin in order to access the device. Now I can also reset my gear fit or I can go to my info so I can see about the gear fit and see my software version. Now for me, one of the most useful features about the gear fit is this notification manager. So you can see in the upper right corner, if I go back here, you see we have 71 pending notifications. If I tap on it, you can see all the apps that are pushing notifications that have not yet been addressed. So you can see my email app, the voicemail app, ask.fm Gmail, the messages app, as well as Hangouts. And you can also go up here to delete the notifications like so, but you can also tap and hold on any one of them to bring up that controller as well. So you can tap up here to see your notifications. You can swipe through it left or right. You can also pan through the text. Now you don't see the entire email in this case. So you can see just part of the text and you can continue swiping. You can delete the message like so, click check. You can also swipe to the right to get to the next message. And again, swipe all the way down. You can see more on mobile device. Now if we click show on device, and we go to our device, you can see it automatically unlocked it for us, took us right to the app and to the email. And we also have quick reply. So we have a variety of messages, canned messages, which we can select and send that message. So this works particularly well when you're texting, but you can't input a custom message directly on this device. There is no keyboard, but you can customize these messages under the GearFit Manager.
Now, if you have your device set to vertical orientation and you're looking at a message with lots of text, as you can see, it's kind of difficult to read. So you can change the orientation here. This only appears again if you have this device set to vertical orientation instead of horizontal. Now, there's another interesting feature here with notifications on the Gear Fit. So if you're looking at a notification and you bring up your device and wake it up, you can see it takes you directly to that app that pushed the notification. Now, while the Gear Fit doesn't have a microphone or speakers, you can receive phone calls on this device, and I'll show you exactly what that means. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial myself. All right, so I'm getting a vibration on the Gear Fit, and now I have two options here. I can reject the call, or I can send a text message by swiping. So the call is rejected, now I have the option to select this message, click check, and it will send the message to the rejected phone caller. Now the next thing I want to take a look at is the Gear Fit Manager. So instead of using the device to edit it, you can actually use the Gear Fit Manager, which also has a few additional options you can access on the, the uh, Fit itself. So for example, we have our home screen styler. So we have wallpaper, clocks, as you can see it's syncing to the device when it does that, and our layout. So we can reorder our layout like so if we prefer, and then we can also change our clock settings. So let's go ahead and wake up our device so we can see our clocks change in real time. So you can see we can select our pedometer clock. There we go. And we can also change our clock face, like so. And we have several other clock faces which are not included on the device which you can download. So for example, I like this clock here. If I select it, it's downloading the clock and updating the device. Now some of these clock faces have additional settings here. So you can show date, or you can change your weather settings. So I've selected Fahrenheit, auto refresh every hour, or you can increase that. And you can also use the current location for your uh, weather information. Getting back to wallpapers, we have our color palette. So if you just want a solid color, you can do that as well. And again, it updates live for you. And we can go back here. We can also select our own images. So we can select images from our gallery here. So I can go ahead and just select one of these images. Now what we have to do is basically crop the image so it fits the watch. We're gonna click done. And there we go. You can see it's updated to the wallpaper with our custom image. And then we have the standard array of patterns including the default pattern which replicates the GS5. You can also select some other colors. Now we also have the S Health app, which stays synced to the Gear Fit. So all of your exercises, all your pedometer readings, and uh, your heart rate monitoring is also in that app. We can also go to settings here. Uh, so we can select our pedometer transfer interval from three hours or greater. We can also select transfer now to get it going quicker. Now, as I mentioned, the Gear Fit can actually track your sleep patterns, but the app is not included with the S Health app. You actually have to go to more apps and you'll find it here, sleep. So you can download it. I've already done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and launch the app from my app drawer here, go to sleep, and it transfers all of your information from your sleep uh, event here. So you can see last night's sleep was seven hours and five minutes, and I can go to my metrics here to see the entire event. So I can go to the hour and see exactly when I woke up or when I moved around anyway throughout the course of the night. All right, so let's take a look at notifications. So you can disable notifications on the Gear Fit, just toggle that on and off. Now we have limit notifications, which you can turn on. Basically, this will prevent this from displaying notifications while you're using your connected Galaxy device. Uh, the only exception is when you're receiving incoming calls or you get some alarms. Now we have Smart Relay, which is that feature that basically allows you to directly access a app that's pushing the notifications on the Gear Fit. All you have to do is pick up your connected device, and if you're looking at that uh, push notification on your device, it will automatically launch the app for you and take you right there. It's using motion to detect that action, so you do have to kind of move the device around in order for that to work. So it's not necessarily the most reliable feature. Now we have preview message. Uh, so you can receive a preview of the text of a message, such as an email message or a SMS message. Uh, if you don't want that to be displayed, you can check that on and off. Now we also have screen off, and that basically will prevent this display from lighting up when you get a notification, unless it's a phone call or an alarm. Now you can also select exactly what apps push notifications to your gear fit. So that includes the phone dialer or the phone app, the alarm clock, the calendar, missed calls, SMS messages, email, and weather. And then you have third-party apps, such as ask.fm, which I have checked. So you can select any apps you want or unselect them, Facebook, Gmail, I think I have Hangouts in here as well, Instagram, and then we have YouTube and Twitter and that sort of thing down here as well. So you just get notifications from those apps and they appear on your smartwatch.
Now let's take a look at this settings panel. So we have double pressing the power key to activate a certain function. As you can see, I have notifications selected, but you can also set that from this panel. We have auto lock, which basically allows you to use the gear fit as a key to unlock your device. So if you enable this, we're gonna select a pattern lock here. Pretty simple, continue, confirm. And we're gonna to have to set a pin if that doesn't work. Now, if the gear fit is connected via Bluetooth to your device, all you have to do is swipe to unlock it. But if you disconnect it, you'll have to enter in that swipe gesture or your key. Now, we have something called safety assistance. This is a feature I covered in my GS5 review, but it's also available for the gear fit. Now, basically what will happen here is if you are in an emergency situation, you can triple press the power button on the side to send an emergency message to designated contacts to alert them to your situation. It also sends them your location. Uh, you can select your primary contacts right here. Right now I have none selected, but you have to in order to enable that feature. So again, if you're in a situation where you can't pick up your phone, you can't talk, you just triple press that button and it sets it up for you. Now under text input methods, once again, we don't have an on-screen keyboard, so you have some pre-canned messages for rejecting a phone call or responding to SMS or email messages. So under edit reject message, you basically have one message to pick from, so you can go with what they've given you or you can modify it yourself. Now under edit text templates, you have several options here, so you can remove some of them or add additional ones here. Now the gear fit is joined by the gear two and the gear two Neo. The gear two is $100 more, features a two megapixel rear facing camera good for 720p video along with an IR blaster. It also incorporates a heart rate sensor and certainly a much larger display, which gives you better text reading, for example, if you wanna read your email messages and that sort of thing. You can also take phone calls on here because it does integrate a microphone and speaker. So there's a lot more features here, but again, $100 more and you get a metal watch face. So this is just a heavier, more impressive device than something like this, which is much lighter weight. But there is an interesting option here. So we have the Gear 2 Neo, which is the same price, $199, but gives you quite a few more features. It just doesn't look as nice, I think. It's mostly made out of plastic. I'm not a big fan of this mocha color I picked. I think I'd prefer black. But otherwise, it has the same features of the Gear 2, the full-size Gear 2, which is $100 more. So you get a larger display. You get that home button for interacting with the display. Uh, you get a heart rate sensor, speaker and microphone. You get an IR blaster. It does lack the camera of the full Gear 2. Uh, but again, similar feature set to the Gear Fit, but adds a few more. So for the same price, you get a little more with this device, but certainly doesn't look as cool as the Gear Fit and certainly not as lightweight. So in conclusion, let's talk about my pros and cons of the Gear Fit. So in terms of pros, I think design is its biggest pro. This is definitely one of the best looking smart watches on the market. It's very unusual with that curved OLED display, which looks beautiful off axis and is really nice to interact with because you have those multiple curves both in both directions. So it feels really nice to work with. It's also very lightweight and comfortable. It's very compact and not bulky at all. So if you're used to wearing smart watches or any watches, this is definitely the thinnest and lightest you're going to find. It's also got fairly decent battery life. I'm able to get about three to four days out of it. That's a day longer than the other Gear smartwatches. It's also relatively affordable, I think, at $200. Gives you a lot of smartwatch features uh, while retaining a really unique design. You also have great fitness tracking, but of course you do have to use the S Health app. Now in terms of cons, it's pretty small. So the screen real estate isn't great for reading text, but it does get by. No speakers means that you don't receive audible notifications, but the notification motor, the vibration motor, and there is pretty intense. Now it's limited to Samsung devices. Uh, so if you like the device, you also have to like the Samsung device that it's attached to. Now my favorite feature of a smartwatch is the notification system. Now that's because I may not hear or feel the notification of the smartphone in my pocket, while I'm much more likely to feel it or notice it on my smartwatch. So I'm definitely finding this to be a much more reliable and very useful system. So that's gonna do for me in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.